friends. The time has come to do the full official corset thrift flip. This is a part of my project series. I did my first one, metallic boots. I actually, if you're new here, did this whole entire video in the summertime before my vacation where I had thrifted this gorgeous dress. Okay, here, let's start from the top, okay? Here's the rundown, all right? So I thrifted this exact dress here. Boom, gorgeous. Look it up close. Over my birthday weekend, February of 2022. That is almost a full year ago. And my goal was to add the corset back by my vacation to go to a really nice wedding at the Ritz Carlton in July or June. July, I think. So that was the goal. I did the whole thrift flip video, everything, went to upload all the footage. My hard drive corrupted as I was exporting my tutorial. Like I had done it, edited it, completed it with all the information and I was exporting it and then my hard drive corrupted and all the footage was gone from Final Cut Pro and I, 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 y'all, I cried. I started crying. I was like, this is the end. Like, I stayed up almost all night editing this before my trip. Like, ugh, I was so upset. And then I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna let this stop me from at least posting what I did on Instagram or TikTok. And of course, <laughs> The Instagram reel went super viral. I got like 2.5 million views and like so many people commenting, where's the tutorial, where's the tutorial? Even though I put in the thing that my hard drive corrupted and I was very upset about it, people still asked and I was like, you know what, okay. I'm gonna get the people what they want. Like I would wanna see this. So I'm gonna go ahead and look for a new dress and I'm not gonna redo my gorgeous dress right here, right? This is what it looks like now, which it's not even perfect. So this is probably, <laughs> Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. I looked online forever, found, my mom sent me this actually, Poshmark, $6, this BCBG, super cute dress. Same vibe, same look, and it's a size two, which I'm like a four, six, for sure, like always, my whole life. And then, of course I tried it on, and it fits perfectly, so I was like, shh. Shoot. I waited until the last minute to try this on and then it ended up fitting. So I was like, cancel that. We're gonna start the series with my metallic boots because I wanted to do that anyway too. So then I was like, okay, round three, we're gonna order another dress. So I ordered this one in a size zero. I'm like, of course a zero is gonna fit. Well, I didn't look at the measurements and this zero is 1909, the brand, and it's just like not a zero. Like this is not a size zero dress. Um, and if I lined both of these up, they would be the same because this one also fits me perfectly. So I said, you know what? If I have one more literal T-length like bubble dress, like I already have three now and when, when do we wear these? Like I literally do not know when I'm gonna wear these, maybe a wedding or something, but I don't like run around in T-length dresses all the time. So I was like, I'm gonna stop wasting my time and my money and everyone else's time and I'm just going to redo the round one, okay? So I probably should have done it in the first place when everything corrupted, but at the time I was just so hurt by my computer. And so what we're gonna do is kind of a tutorial type vibe of how I got to this point and then also corrections along the way. And I wish I had the footage, but I don't to share my mistakes because it was kind of like a trial and error, like how to, but also learning with me kind of vibe. Because at first I had sewn it one way and then I decided I didn't like that, ripped it out, did it another way with the sewing machine, decided I don't think I like that either, ripped it out and then I landed on doing hand sewing. So for me personally, sewing it by hand was better for me because I could control it easier and I'm not that skilled of like a sew, sewing girly. Like I did, I went to college for fashion design, but that was, um, oh my God. Like the last time I sewed a project was five years ago. And I, I do not sew anymore really. Like I hem stuff or take something in, but I'm not like creating stuff from patterns or anything. So like this wasn't too daunting of a task, but I don't have the skills to sew it perfectly up to the edge on each tack and make it the same length. So I do suggest that. I did see someone sew down each of their little ribbons and then sew it onto the back, which I think would be a good call, but we're not gonna do that because we're gonna do it the way I did it. And I don't know how helpful this will be, but I guess it's better than nothing, right? Like, whatever. I'm, I'm really trying, y'all. I, I promise, like, I'm doing my best here. So we're going to sew up the bottom of it because it didn't need to go down this far, and of course I didn't know until I tried it on. So we're gonna fix that, and then I kinda wanna redo the loops to make them smaller, but at the same time, that seems like really pointless at this point. Let's go ahead and do like a step-by-step, -step, okay? Step one, what I did was completely seam ramp out the zipper. So it started out with a back zip, and that's what didn't fit. So I completely seam ripped that out, and then cut off the excess. A mistake I had made is I accidentally, like if you can see, 
I accidentally cut this one like it should have stayed going like this but I cut the selvage so far down that all that was left was literally this little sliver I was so like shoot now like and there's no turning back once you cut so be very careful about that because you're going to be sewing down the little loopies like this on the selvage and the first time I had sewn him where you could see oh this is really hard to explain like backwards because I had sewn it before like laying flat like this and gone the needle through like this, this. And you could see the seam on the outside. So we have to flip it up like this and sew it coming in. Does that make sense? Like here it is totally flat, but we have to do it from the selvage. So you sew it kind of facing out or I guess in. So what had really given me the idea to do this was I've, I googled it and people were like use grommets, buy and buy one made from Amazon and sew it on, all this stuff and I was like I'm not going to be able to find anything that I like like that and I really didn't want to add grommets to my garment so I had this H&M corset top and I was like oh my god I could literally do what they did because what they used is literally the fabrication and made their own loops. This one you can tell that the loops were created and then sewn on but as you can see here you can see the stitch line like that they did with a sewing machine which looks great the purpose of this top but for my dress that has all these um pleats and stuff i knew that wasn't gonna look great so i wanted to refrain from doing anything like that so what i did was first i took ribbon just literal google look at this drawer y'all think my life is chaotic already just just don't look at any of my drawers so I cut them all the same. I did one inch, I think. On. I might have one floating around in here. Honestly. So I did mine two inches and I kind of wish I would have done it maybe an inch and a half because the loops are a little bit more apparent than I wanted them to be. Like these loops are a lot, I don't know, like maybe it's just the length of them or I mean the width of them, but they seem less apparent. I don't know. Anyway. So you cut a little, you know, ribbon girly. And then you're going to, my camera's dying. Are you kidding me? All right, we're back. Oh, can you hear the candle? It's kind of a loud candle, it's a wood burning candle. So very carefully, you know, y'all stay vigilant out there. You are going to burn the edges of your ribbon so that it doesn't fray. So now we have our little ribbon and I just measured from the very top of my dress to the very top of where I wanted the next loop to begin about eight inches is probably good to have corset to get into the dress still so yeah i just made like 15 of them just to have extras too so just measure it out see how many you need cut the little ribbons and then so begins the next part all right so i'm going to seam rip out to use as the tutorial one but my hand sewing is not perfect and so don't come for me. I'm just a fashion girly who went to school and enjoys sewing, but not really, and always wants the easiest, quickest way to do something. So nothing is ever perfect for me, and I just don't care that much. So if you're a perfectionist, go look for like a real tutorial girly. <laughs> I'm sure there's something that exists. And just in case anyone's wondering, I went to school for fashion design, not seamstress school. There's a huge difference. I will link all the supplies that I have, but you probably don't need a seam ripper if this is the only thing you're doing it for. You can just rip out the seams, you know. So we have all the ones that we did already. And of course I chose the side with the crazy deformity. That's okay. Um, the other side looks like this. So this is the end goal. Does that make sense where I'm saying flip it out? Like the loop should be facing out so that once you put the ribbon in, it'll face in and the selvage will be tucked behind. Is that a better explanation? Anyway, okay. So we take it and we flip out our selvage to be flat down. And then we're going to take our little guy. And the way I looped it is so they were all in the same direction. I just folded it from here to like here. Boom. And then I just literally put it to the edge. And then using a hand sewing needle, I sewed it right up to the selvage edge right here. So as you can see, we have the selvage edge down here the ribbons hitting here and then we sew it right up to where we want it to flip and be pulling from all right so i use this thing and it's usually pretty cheap you just have like a bunch of okay danger needles and then I'm gonna thread it cut a fresh thread so it pieces through easily i'm like shaking okay camera and then you get it and then i cheat and i double my thread again 
not a professional, but that's a okay. game. Boom, so you have the double thread, which means less sewing. And then I just go like this, wrap it around, then you kind of can roll it and then pull it through. And then boom, you got a little knot, making sure that they're all the same like loop. Like the right side, I put on top for each one, so it looks good, you know what I mean? I'm gonna go from the bottom so that the knot doesn't show ever, and try and stay on that selvaged edge exactly where all the other ones are so that it's even when it creases backwards. Then we have it sewn here slaying and we're just going to on the other side you'll put your needle through an already done stitch to knot it and then i just do this like twice usually so we go in to a knot it's kind of hard to see but into a stitch knot it and then i also will go around the actual just thread part and go up to the edge put my finger down so that i can get it all the way to the edge and then pull it tight and then you have a knot right here done and then you'll just repeat that down the row of your backing until it's completed like mine all right so now the whole thing should be complete slaying great job i am going to remove i think these two and then try it on and see if that's okay and hopefully it'll look better and then we'll do like a reveal and that's really it i hope that was um useful and I'm sorry if you waited this long and didn't, you know, enjoy the tutorial. I'm so sorry. It was way more entertaining the first time. But life happens, you know, and you just gotta write it out. Anyway, I'll be back. Okay, well, let's turn it inside out. And then let's put on the corset. <laughs> I need to calm down. Um, I want my corset to start from the top. You just kind of loop it in. All right, done. Now let's try it on. All right, so here we have it on, and now it's like down to my underwear. So it's actually the right length down. When I had it there, it was like kind of revealing. But here we go. And then just kind of tighten it to where you want. I mean, if I had someone to help me, that would be ideal to make it like, what's the word, like flatten it out and stuff, but tighten it up like that. And then I'm just gonna tuck this in. All right, so see, now it fits perfect. It's all tied up at the back. And this is the final like back look. Of course it's not perfect, but it does work. And now I can wear this dress and I hope I helped you a little bit if you have something like this that you wanted to do with your flip on. Again, I will put all the supplies linked to the description box or you can just Google it, you know. All right, friends, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it helped you in some way. I know that I'm really happy that I can wear this dress because I fell in love with it at the thrift store. And you know what? We got to the end somehow. Like somehow I did do my tutorial and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. I post new videos every Thursday. Thrifting project series is begun. I'm doing a lot of things like adding feathers to stuff or pearls. And I do want to paint like and more stuff metallic. But that's besides the point. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see that stuff and also follow me on instagram tiktok all the things and i'll see you guys in my next video again new videos every thursday all right bye